Hey, so this lecture is really just about um, what you're being asked to do in the forum for this week. Because um, uh, really it's the stuff that you're going to do before you make your post that I think is the most beneficial. So if you look in the instructions, it says, hey, read the article by Trier. Trier, Trier, I don't know how to say it. Um, and that article is in the course documents. And it's his article in the dictionary of, I think, theological hermeneutics on theological hermeneutics. Now, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm not sure that this article is, um, well, it's, it's, it's for academics and for graduate students. And so when you read this article, it's, it's not like you're just going to get a list of different approaches to doing theological interpretation of scripture. Now, you can imagine that there are many because of what we talked about in the philosophical hermeneutics lecture. So if you've listened to that lecture, you know that there's all these issues going on with authorial intent and speech act theory and uh, the horizons, two horizons, Gadamer. You're, and you're going to see a number of uh, language games of Wittgenstein. You're going to see a number of these things crop up in Trier's article. Um, because there are so many different approaches to how it is that texts mean things, you can only imagine that there's a number, just a ton of different approaches to how scripture means things. We've already encountered this. We know this from the early church where, you know, there's allegorical interpretation and tropological and you know, looking for the ethical or moral lesson, etc. There's all these different ways that scripture can mean, and they understood that long before there was anything like uh, philosophical hermeneutics. Now that we have that, we've complicated things even more. And what Trier's article is good for is it's almost like he name drops about 40 different uh, people and approaches and it kind of you know smashes them all together and it's not always super clear what he's talking about especially if you're not familiar with the conversation so here's what your assignment is really about it's not about um, trying to figure out from Trier what say uh, gosh what are the some, biblical theology is or the canonical approach I think he even has that bolded it's a headline okay you're not going to understand the canonical approach if you just read what, what Trier says. However, if what Trier says about um, the canonical uh, approach and Brevard Childs and all that, if that sounds interesting to you, and you're like, hmm, that's a, I've never thought about reading the Bible that way, what your assignment really asks you to do is track down the canonical approach. Try and find uh, maybe even someone who's done the uh, canonical approach. I believe the, there's an Old Testament guy named Christopher Seitz who still practices uh, Child's method. And there's Child's himself. You can go and you can you know, find a book where Child's writes about a particular passage and see what it is that he's doing and try and figure it out. It doesn't have to be Child's. It doesn't have to be canonical approach. You could do a biblical theology. I, I want to say he mentions... Who does he mention? I can't remember. Oh, Francis Watson, I think. Text truth, world, text, world, truth, church, something. Uh, there's all these people he mentions. Find one that you think sounds interesting and on your own, apart from Trier, using you know enough the information that he gives you, track that approach down. Try and understand how it works and then pick a, a passage from scripture and try to read it as if you're practicing this approach. Okay? The goal here is for you to do something you've never done before. So if you're really comfortable with, I don't know, pneumatic interpretation, you're, 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 you're Pentecostal, you're charismatic, and you're very comfortable with that type of reading, no, do something different. Uh, look through Trier's article, find an author you're not familiar with, or even one that you're familiar with but you want to be more familiar with, and, and, and tra track them down, read enough to get a sense for it, and then try it. Now, the second part of your uh, forum assignment, is your response part, is where you look at somebody else who's done this as well. Here's what I do not want. I do not want you to go and so you find someone who reads, what, I don't know, using pre-modern interpretation, right? And then you critique a pre-modern reading of a text by modern standards. Okay, so it, you know, if Origen reads the uh, three men at, in Genesis 18 as the economic trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, right? Well, of course, someone who comes along 1,500 years later is going to look at that and say, nope, that's not what that's about. Uh, according to historical critical standards, uh, this text is about hospitality, da-da-da-da-da, you're reading it wrong. Nope. What I'd like to see, 
and this is difficult and you know we're just trying we're trying things out here it's not I'm not going to mar mark you down because you don't do it well just give it your best what you're trying to do is try to understand the text from the perspective of the kind of interpretation that your classmate has used right so and going back to the canonical approach um, Childs wants to say that it matters that uh, Genesis is the first book of the Bible uh, Childs wants to suggest that phone Childs wants to suggest that uh, Genesis being first puts it in the special place and therefore it we should we should take that into account when we're giving readings of Genesis that there is a whole story that comes after which we know because we have the other 65 books of the Bible and that it matters how uh, he even talks about um, the, edit the editorial hand and if you read Childs you'll see that he'll say yeah there's discrete authors between this part and this part what the editor did is he put them together for or she or they put it together in order to make a, a seamless narrative how does that change how we read this text again if that's all unfamiliar to you you have to read Childs the point is is if you're gonna critique someone who reads that way critique them from the perspective of Childs critique them from within the kind of interpretation that they're practicing. If someone's doing a post-colonial reading, uh, reading a text such as Mark, um, with the Gerasene demoniac and legion, right? Well, if you're a post-colonial reader and you're reading things in terms of power and power plays, when you see the word legion in Mark 5, you think of the Roman Empire. You think of the Roman legions. And so, you can look and you can say symbolically what's happened to the Gar Garrison demoniac is that he represents all of the world at the time under oppression by a foreign empire in order to understand what Jesus is doing we need to see that Jesus is rejecting the the empire's power but not doing so violently Jesus puts the empire's power up on some pigs and the empire self-destructs the kid the pigs run off the, the, the cliff and they all die that the empire is left to destroy itself. Power self-deconstructs. Okay, that's a post-colonial reading of Mark 5. Now, if you're critiquing someone's post-colonial reading of Mark 5, you can't, you need to critique from within the, uh, the view that what we're talking about is uh, our issues of power. And you can say, well, wait a minute, you know, um, maybe uh, the issue with that reading is that, um, I don't know, uh, that Jesus himself is exercising a kind of power. What, what it, maybe what you're missing in your reading is you're not uh, identifying properly the way that Jesus' power is different from Roman power. Okay, those are so you're critiquing a post-colonial reading from post-colonial standards, from within the uh, environs of that type of reading. Hopefully, that'll give you some direction for the forum. If you have any questions, you can always teach. Uh, you can always tweet, you can always email, you can, you can give me a call. I